what I thought we would look at today is like a, a metalcore kind of general lesson slash practice session. So what I've done is I've just set up a, a meaty sort of guitar sound on the computer. I've also got like a, a simple drum beat at 100 beats per minute. So not particularly fast, not particularly slow either, but that doesn't really matter. It's just something to help keep time because that's one of the main things we're going to be working on is, is timing, which is super important no matter what style of music you play. But particularly if you're playing metal stuff, you want to keep your rhythm stuff nice and tight. Um, and your sound as well. As you can hear from that, hopefully you can hear from the, uh, from that, depending on the video quality. Uh, <laughs> you can hear the sounds quite heavily gated as well. So I'm using a noise gate. I'm also using my uh, sock. A secret of the pros sock. Now it's just because my guitar is really noisy, um, especially around the nut for some reason. So just having this little sock here has um, quietened it down a little bit. So, so yeah, I thought that's what we would do today is have a look at like a like a sort of a sample practice routine, if you like, is like a sample practice routine for practicing metalcore stuff in in drop c um so first things first obviously make sure you're in tune i was uh really good today i, I made sure i tuned my guitar properly <coughs> Woo. there we go so make sure you're in tune first of all and what we're going to do even before we warm up is we're just going to sort of dive straight into doing the rhythm stuff so the way that i like to work when I'm practicing as well I'm just sort of trying to impart some of that, that knowledge onto you in a way is I don't like to just sort of practice um, scales and technique and theory stuff like all on its own I like to try and be creative with the way I practice I think that's like the missing ingredient so you want to be able to practice your technique and theory but mix it with being creative as well I think that's super important personally um, so that's what I'm trying to do here with this practice session is trying to be a little bit creative and make it a bit more fun and a bit more interesting. Of course, you can practice whatever you want. You should should as well. You should practice songs and things you want to learn. But let's say you're struggling with some areas, for example, just, you know, you're just getting started out and you want to learn about like rhythm and timing and technique and playing tight then this video will hopefully help you and it's because it's going to have all those kind of ingredients in it and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh different rhythms and note values and stuff as well so as far as like note values and rhythms go we're going to keep it really simple we're going to be playing in fours eights we're going to do some triplet work which is threes so that's not so simple not so straightforward it's literally an odd number so we're going to work in threes uh, we're going to work in sixteenths, one yander, two yander, three yander, four yander, so four notes per beat. We're going to work on playing six notes per beat as well. That's like the top, <laughs> that's the top hardest thing we're going to work on is playing six notes per beat. And we're also going to work on gallops as well. So I've set the tempo to 100 beats per minute just so I've got something to play along to with the, uh, with the drum track here. So as far as you doing that at home, like... You can obviously, if, you, if you've got the software to do it, um, just to have a drum loop going, I find that a lot more interesting and creative to practice too, rather than just a boring old metronome. Like I said, I try to, I try to write riffs, I try to write songs or, or little pieces of music when I can, rather than just sort of, you know, for example, just practice scales up and down. So using a drum uh, beat or loop is much more, I don't know, it's interesting, it's a little bit more, or a little less clinical sounding than a metronome. So, yeah, I'm going to use this drum beat. So it's set to 100 beats per minute. So obviously, <coughs> excuse me, you can try and play along to this in the video, or you can, 
like set something up for yourself. But the whole point is, what I want you to take away from this is these are just all practice ideas. Because obviously practice is the most important thing when it comes to making progress <laughs> at anything, especially guitar. Right, so we have set the drum beat up. Uh, we're gonna play fours to start with, so that's just literally playing on the beat, which is harder than it sounds. Um, for some people anyway, so <laughs> it's going to help develop that rock, rock solid sense of timing. Uh, the chords, super simple for what we're going to use today. So we've got open, eight, the eighth fret on the uh, C string, or, or the E, let's call it the E string. Save confusion, so we've got eight and five. When you hear those chords together, that sounds like pretty much any typical kind of like metal chord song from the early noughties. So we've got. So that's our chords, nice and simple. Right, so we're going to start off doing fours. So it should sound like this. Can you hear that? One, two, three, four. That's our tempo. One, two, three, four. Just keep it nice and solid. easy one to get started with. Quick swig of water. Dehydrated here, right. So the next one we're going to look at is eights. So we're playing eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Now for this one you're probably, well you're definitely going to want to put your palm muting down for this. Um, otherwise it sounds a little bit messy when you've got the uh, the eighth notes going. I'll give you, I'll show you. So. This is unmuted. Which actually is okay, but that might not be the sound that you're going for. So you could practice both. You can practice muted and unmuted. Muted is with the... Uh, do and kind of mix it up a little bit so something like that get a bit creative with that so it's just one and two and three and four and for the right hand and chords change at the same time so let's have a look at that start with eights here we go so we'll be playing one and two playing eighth notes so two notes per beat so the next tricky one is uh, the, the tricky triplets trying to play three notes per beat so the way I would count this is I count them like one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet um, I find that it just helps keep me in time yeah because it's a bit weird trying to play an odd number of notes per beat so it sounds a bit like this one triplet like that 
that. So I was doing that sort of all downstrokes. <laughs> Could go alternate. Whichever you find easier to do. Um, personally, I think that all downstrokes is a little bit more aggressive sounding and also it's a bit easier to do. I, I find it a little bit easier to do. With the alternate ones, what you find is because you're going down, up, down, the next group of three starts on and up. So it's the same as when you're playing groups of six as well, which we'll get into in a little bit. So that's what three sounds like against the 4-4-B. Four, four, Let's try that again. Let's give it another go. Same chords. We'll just do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, or one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. It's good. It's good. Uh, works on your your uh, timing and right hand stamina as well. <laughs> a little bit for that one. Even though we're only playing at a hundred, it still feels a little bit bit tricky in places. So once you've got that, it's time to level up. Try and do the sixteenth note. So we're playing four notes per beat. Actually, this one's a little bit easier than than the triplets. I would say. So we're trying to play four notes per beat. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do the muting still, but I'm only going to play one string. I'm just going to stick to the low six string for this one. So we're playing four notes per beat. One E under, two E under, three E under, four E under, one E under, two E under, three E under, four E under. That's how I count it anyway. And I've counted so much that I need to drink once again. Excuse me, stay hydrated. Right. Let's try that. So we're going to go one E under, two E under, three E under, four E under. Ready? Follow along whatever you want as well. Just try to give you some ideas for stuff to practice. Two, three, four. Yeah, that's one of your alternate picking that is, it's great. So yeah, just a hundred beats per minute, just down up, down up, down up, down up. Just constant. Be really, really consistent with it. Don't do your upstrokes or your downstrokes too hard or too soft. Just try and keep it all exactly the same, like a machine, like a robot. Right. Oh, one we missed out is gallops. So again, uh, people mistakenly call gallops triplets. They're not, even though it is technically you are playing three notes per beat, but it's not three even notes per beat. You're playing two sixteenths and an eighth note, or an eighth note and two sixteenths joined together. So it gives you the, the gallop sound, like Iron Maiden or Slayer or something like that. Um, so what do they sound like with a beat? They sound like this. try the reverse gallop which is dun, 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 oh, sorry, the, the normal gallop that was a reverse gallop so the normal gallop is dun, 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 dun. can be 
hard to kind of distinguish the two really. Um, uh, now with the gallops, as I've discussed in like earlier lessons and stuff as well, to to loads of people <laughs> talking about uh, galloping because it's it's probably like one of the most important things in metal rhythm guitar, isn't it? Um, but you can also choose where to put the gallop on what beat or on the and of a beat or whatever. There's there's tons of variations you can do with this, but just to keep it nice and simple for today, let's just do the reverse gallop on the beat. So it sounds like this. Two, three, four. guitar during that or my sloppy guitar playing one or the other um, so there you go see the sock trick <laughs> fixes it right <laughs> you see why so many guys use fret wraps and stuff um, so yeah, the last rhythm we're going to look at for now is the, um, the sex tuplet so we're going to attempt to play six notes per beat um, you hear this in absolutely tons of like metal songs. Um, I suppose one of the most popular examples is One by Metallica. The -da 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 so it's a group of six followed by one and then it stops for the rest of the the, uh, the measure and then another group of six. So it's sort of like that. So you've got to be like super tight when you're picking on that one and also like you don't want to do the same pick motions that you do for normal like chuggy stuff. You want to uh, keep that like really small, really tight alternate picking on that. So no big exaggerated motions. I think if you're practicing it slowly, then by all means exaggerate the motions. But when it comes to actually doing it, you want to keep that really short. So I always say like, imagine it's glued to the string and you can only, you can't pull it away from the string or push it away from the string, it's on the string. The whole time. So, what six is going to sound like? So this is six is at 100 beats per minute. See, it's like it's fast, isn't it? Sevens. So what I was doing there was I was doing sixes and stopping. Um, I suppose you can do sixes all the way through. Let's try that as an example. So I'll do some stops, and I'll, I'll use this as a bit of a, a bit of a jam to show you how I would like. I'll use this example as a little bit of a jam to kind of show you how I would try and perhaps put all those like different rhythms and stuff together. Thank you. 
it's just messing around, just trying out like the different note values. Um, you probably wouldn't do that in an actual song. You wouldn't hear that happening too many times. But for the purposes of practicing, I think it's a good idea just to kind of mess around and change up the the rhythms and stuff a little bit. So yeah, hopefully that section was helpful. Just taking a, taking a look at all the different note values and different rhythms and stuff. Um, so yeah, kind of is a good right hand warm up. Now for the left hand, not that this is just warm up exercises, these are obviously things you can use all the time, but for the left hand, I think one thing that's important is to um, obviously warm up you know, all four digits and stuff, but we're trying to not just do the chromatic kind of exercises and stuff, because they're a bit boring. Um, I can see the benefit to them, obviously, like they are they are kind of useful, but um, if you just want to crack on and play the metal, then you don't have to do them really. But one thing I would emphasize is the need to do a little bit of stretching with your fingers as well. So sometimes you might be struggling to like get your hand into certain shapes and stuff. So having a little bit of a stretchy chord practice as part of your practice routine is, is a good idea. One chord uh, that I really like to use, and you do hear a lot in kind of like metalcore stuff, is a chord called the sus2 chord, or suspended second chord. So, what does that look like? Well, on normal tuned, not drop tuned, but on normal tuned, so in this, in this case we can go from the A string, which we'll probably end up doing a little bit of in this video anyway. We're gonna go from the A string, so you do like a power chord shape as normal, so that's 5th fret A, 7th fret D. So that's your normal kind of power chord shape. What I'm gonna do is that. So what I've done there is I've put my pinky on the 9th fret on the G string. That gives you this really cool, really cool chord sound. So that's the sound of a sus2 chord. If you do wanna do sus2 chords starting on the, the drop string, on your drop C or drop D, like what you would do is you take a normal power chord shape, which is super simple in drop tuning, right? Use one finger. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna play, uh, let's say the fifth fret. So I've got fifth fret power chord, and that's on the drop D and the A. And then I'm gonna add in this case, my pinky to the seventh fret of the D string. So you probably hear that in tons of like metal songs, that chord. So if you're trying to practice this chord on from the fifth string, it's a different shape. So. What you could do is, if you're struggling to get that stretch between the ring finger and the pinky, what I would do is I'd replace the ring finger with the middle finger. It's a nicer stretch. So experiment and see which one works for you. So I'd kind of chop and change. Depends what you're doing on the fretboard as well. So let's say that our sort of objective, if you like, is to just practice the, the hand stretching, get a little bit more kind of dexterity and a little bit of a warm up with that. So I'm gonna take, uh, could do the same frets actually. I'm gonna do um, the eighth fret, the fifth fret. Something like that. just concentrate on getting the, all the notes to come out cleanly. Swap fingers. So if you're feeling brave, you can move that shape lower down the neck. So it kind of forces you to stretch out a little bit further because obviously the frets are wider down there. So, um, yeah, there's some examples of stuff you could try now, just to get the stretch. Um, let's say you wanna get a bit creative and also you wanna combine some of the technique stuff that we've been looking at. So I would take something like that sus2 chord. Kind of, I know that 
that's a bit of a lame example, but like give make it into a thing, make it into like a riff or something, you know. <laughs> Something like that. You get the idea. Right. So, um, after doing that for a few minutes, like your left hand should feel pretty kind of warmed up and that anyway. Uh, so, let's talk about trying to synchronise the hands together. Now, obviously there's a whole bunch of different exercises and stuff you could do. Um, but we want the exercises to be musical. So, let's look at one of my favourite things to do, which is play scales up and down. No, that's not true. But we are gonna we are gonna look at a scale. So um, the the mother of all music, Western music anyway, is like a, a major scale, which you probably heard me talking about before. So how it relates to what we're gonna look at today, uh, it's more of a kind of shape that I want to show you. So if you're in uh, drop tuning as well, you're probably not gonna play the sixth string. And also in real life, when you're playing solos and lead guitar stuff and that, you, you might, guys don't use the sixth string as much as you think. It's usually like runs, scale runs and stuff start from the fifth string. So what we're gonna do is, well, I'll give you a couple of options for this, but we're gonna look at a major scale shape, um, which is the, one of the first three note per string scale shapes you would have learned so well, there you will learn so on a like i said on a six string guitar tune normally you'd have this sort of shape so you go first fret third fret fifth fret same on the next string then the next two strings the d and the g string two three five two three five and then the next strings three five six three five six so what i've done there is I've played low or haven't played it I've just shown you the notes for an F major um, scale. So the good news is like once you learn that shape, that's it, like you can move that major scale shape anywhere and some guys do that pretty much like exclusively. That's all they do is they just play major scale kind of stuff. But what's different is obviously with metal and metal chord stuff, you're playing minor like all the time. So it's all about context. So if I'm, or if you're playing over like, chords we did earlier this scale would definitely fit if you wanted to have a little noodle and a little improvise so fret wise again we're going to ignore the low string we're going to go from the first fret on the a string so we have one three five then we jump to the next two strings and it's two three five and the next two strings is three five six three five six So, if you're practicing this and you're like, bloody hell, that's a stretch, I can't quite manage that. If you're struggling to do that, move the whole thing up 12 frets. It's gonna sound really cool as well. So, it is gonna be the 13th fret, 15th, 17th, and then 14, 15, 17 on the next two strings. Then 15, 17, 18, 15, 17, 18. Just realized I haven't got fret markers on this guitar. See these uh, faded, crappy little red stickers I've got on here. So it's exactly the same shape, it's just the frets will be a lot easier to manage that maybe. If you've got like, if you're struggling with a stretch, if you've got small fingers or whatever. That's it, and it all sounds really cool as well, playing up there. So once you've got that shape under your fingers, practice it nice and slow as well. One way I'm doing that is I'm, I use pretty much alternate picking all the time to play lead stuff. Um, some guys like to use like the, the economy picking things and, that, and I, I do do that occasionally, but I think again, for the sake of simplicity and, and to play solid, just use alternate picking. So what can we do with that scale? So if we put the old drum beat on, one, there's a few different ways you could practice this. Bear with me one second. Right, there we go. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Play one note per beat. Okay. 
So back down. Messy. Um, it sounds all right. Like I said, we don't want it to sound too much like we're just playing scales up and down, which essentially is what we're doing. But we're gonna use this as a little bit of a, um, a rhythm and timing exercise again. So I've just played fours, like we did on the rhythm stuff. I've just basically played one note per beat. So now, if you can, round that up to two, two notes per beat. One, two, and three, and four. And So that was not too bad, like playing two notes per beat. Um, you, I would say you really want to have the shape down first before you attempt to um, speed it up. Um, so make sure you, yeah, you really got that scale shape on your fingers first of all. Um, what else? Carry on going, same way that we did before. You can do three notes, three notes per beat. The two trip, the three trip, the four trip, the something like that, and then wrap that up so you'd have four notes per beat. You're trying to play four notes per beat on a three note per string scale. So yeah, I mean, that can be a bit of a struggle sometimes if you're using exclusively three note per string um, scale stuff. Because um, obviously it's an odd number of string, odd number of strings, odd number of notes per string. So you want to try to make sure you, your um, your picking is all alternate and you keep it nice and tight and uh, watch out for when you're crossing over the strings. So don't worry if all these like examples seem a little bit difficult and a little bit like ahead of you right now. Um, this is like stuff that you can always refer to because it's also just used so much. Like that, that scale shape that I've just shown you there, just that major scale that's used in absolutely tons of solos and lead stuff by pretty much like everyone. So if, even if you just get that shape under your fingers, it's a really good foundation to work from and that speed and, and all that kind of stuff comes later. So speaking of which, I'm gonna to attempt to play um, sixes. So groups of six per beat. So yeah, it's been a while since I did any kind of like shreddy guitar stuff. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right. today. <laughs> it will not beat me. Yeah, so with that one, that's quite a tricky one to, to get down again. The, the three note per string thing actually really helps there because it's, because um, you're playing six notes. So playing it on a three note per string scale kind of helps but it's still like quite quite tricky quite fast to get down 
So that's more of a long-term goal for most people, I would say. Um, concentrate on your rhythm chops and stuff mainly. But it's cool to have some ideas about what's going to happen later on with the lead stuff and, and everything as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll work up to that one. So going back to the old uh, riffs, one thing you uh, will definitely encounter when you're trying to play like metalcore kind of stuff or uh, noughties kind of metal is um, string skipped riffs, which is like one of my favorite things to do. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of try and keep it nice and simple again. We're gonna use, we loosely use that idea that we've been playing with for the whole session. So we're gonna use that idea of playing in like fours, eights, sixteens, triplets, and all the different note values. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some notes on the A string and the D string. So. <laughs> Five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. Now I don't mind how you play those. That's just a, that's a D minor scale, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some chugs to that as well. So like one of the easiest ways to do that is to, um, or one of the easiest ways to to practice like the string skip is to just go from the A string to the D string, uh, or the the low string. Show what I mean. How I'm getting that distinction, I suppose, between the notes, the separation, is after you've played the fret, you, know, you want to kind of relax your finger so that it cuts off. And then what I'm doing was hitting three chugs with down strokes. So I'm a little bit, uh, not weird, but well, I am weird. But um, it's a little bit different to how a lot of guys would approach this. So a lot of people just all do all down strokes for that. I like to use up strokes. I don't. I don't know why. It's. Um, I think it goes back to uh, when I started having guitar lessons, or probably well, obviously before I started having guitar lessons, like uh, when I was young and you were even younger. Um, one of the things my guitar first guitar teacher said to me was like, "Do you know that you can play down strokes? You don't have to hit everything up." So for some reason I started, when I started playing, I used to go, I used to hit like everything with an upstroke. Um, and fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, it is what it is, it's kind of stayed with me to this day. So when I start riffs like that, you'll see me doing it with an upstroke. So you don't have to do that, but like, I'm just saying that's what I do. Most normal people. <laughs> downstrokes to play their riffs but I go which is essentially sounds pretty much the same but I just prefer playing it that way there's no rules is there when it comes to uh, guitar playing I don't think so <laughs> there's no rules when it comes to riffing so let's take um, let's use that as an, an example so five seven eight are the frets that I'm going to be using uh, and I want to play in groups of four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Like that, really. to really give those notes some separation. So with the right hand, you're kind of getting a little bit of a bounce there. I'll try and show you. So you guys can see my right hand. Kind of 
kind of like lifts, lifts up, bounces up enough just to let the note out. So I call that like opening the gate. So I'm opening the gate just a little bit to let the note through. So um, yeah, that kind of riffing is all over the show with the the, uh, the noughties kind of metalcore sound. So once you can do that rhythm, one thing you could also experiment with as well as doing it like in the different numbers, fours and sixes and triplets and all that, is like to change where you, um, or how frequently you do the fretted notes. So what I was playing there, that little, that kind of idea, what I'm doing is like the pick hand is still basically it's doing the same speed, it's the same tempo, it's the same rhythm, but I'm just inserting more of like the melody notes into it. Show you what I mean. I suppose the quickest one, noisy guitar, is to do like all alternate. So what I mean by that is all alternate would be that kind of thing. some of them was I'm skipping over to the, the D string as well. So that's quite a good thing to practice. Skipping over to, uh, from the, from this low D string to that D string, that one even. Um, Cause this is just a little bit harder to do, but obviously that is in, again, gazillions of metal core songs. So you want to try and get that kind of skill down as well um yeah so i think that sort of pretty much covers a lot of the the little rhythm concepts and stuff i wanted to just talk about today really um the main thing again is to experiment and be creative and try to obviously have fun with these kind of ideas so just as a little like recap we looked at <laughs> chords and then what you could do is use some of the sus shapes around and, and uh, make up like little things like that I mean that's sort of how songs get written it's just by experimenting with um, with your chords and the, the picking kind of things and stuff so you 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 you're you're noodling you know well, not noodling but that that kind of experimentation when you're practicing becomes part of your practicing routine and then that could lead on to doing some like songwriting stuff and that if you wanted to go down that kind of route. Um, like I said before, I think the the creative element is really important to access when you're playing because it kind of helps tie everything together, all the technique and the theory and stuff. Um, and obviously the good news is for like metalcore kind of stuff, there's not a huge amount of theory that you have to learn in order to do like what we've done today. You just need to know how to play uh, a few basic things really. But the techniques are obviously chugging. Make sure you can do that. Make sure you can just like 
solidly hold down a, a power chord and just chug, or just a single string as well. Make sure you can do that alternate. Um, and the string skipping stuff. Make sure you can, can do those kind of riffs. Um, speed will come. You just have to be accurate to start with. Make sure that it just sounds good at a really slow tempo. It sounds solid and that you've got that down. And as for some of the lead stuff we talked about as well with the, with the major scale pattern, um, start using it. So if you're playing over um, like a, a backing track, for example, in um, maybe it'd be C, wouldn't it? So you could find a C minor backing track to play along to, or like some kind of metalcore backing track in, in drop C or C and just use that scale. So back in the day, that's like, um, that was one of the on only scales I knew. Well, actually that's not true. It wasn't one of the only scales I knew. It was one of the only scales I knew how to use properly. And again, I think that comes from taking a scale shape that's quite simple to get under your fingers and making sure you can actually use it. So yes, playing a scale up and down is important to get it under your fingers, but then it's like what you do with that scale and the music you actually create with it that's that's the most important thing, to be honest. So um, so yeah, I hope you found that that useful because we've got some, some cool ideas um, for practicing with that. Again, like the, the theory side of it's important and you know, knowing what, what you're playing, when you're playing and all that. But the most important thing is, is practicing it and trying to be uh, creative with your practice routines and stuff. So in addition to, you know, you practicing songs and, and whatnot, and riffs, like hopefully some of the concepts that we've looked at today will be helpful in terms of you kind of structuring some, um, some stuff together for your practicing. Um, but yeah. Let me know how you get on and I'll, um, I'll see you next time.